Hey Bears, Eric here. And in today's video, we're going to talk about this upcoming Harry Potter reboot over at HBO Max. I wasn't sure if this was still happening. I was like, is this still a thing? Are we still doing this? We're trying to reboot those movies, the extremely popular and successful movies. We're going to redo all that um, as a TV series. I don't know. I, I didn't, like, I don't think it's a good idea, personally. Uh, but look, I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan. Just from the jump, I've said this on other live streams where I've talked about this. Um, for me, I watched the Harry Potter movies. I wasn't someone that read the books, so I don't have a lot of book knowledge. Uh, I did enjoy the films when I saw them for the most part. Uh, Fantastic Beast movies, I think I saw one in theaters. So for me, it's not hard to boycott <laughs> Harry Potter because I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan anyway. So for me, it's like, oh, there's Harry Potter thing coming out. Okay, sure. I guess a lot of people are probably really excited. Massively popular IP. Um, but it seems like this new prequel show that's moving forward, um, it's, it's had a few stumbles. Obviously the writer strike affected it and things like that. We also have the Hall Hogwarts legacy game. And I want to talk a little bit about that here, because I'm pretty sure this is going to follow a similar path to the Hogwarts legacy backlash, um, that we had. And I want to talk about why I think we need to come up. Like if we're going to call out this kind of stuff. If we're going to be vigilant about making sure to hold people accountable, we need to find something else, another way to do it that doesn't generate the kind of spite that Hogwarts Legacy did. Um, because with Hogwarts Legacy, it got called out and it ended up being a massively successful game at launch. Now, of course, over time, it's lost players. I think I had the have the screen open over here. Uh, at, at its peak, it was like almost, it's like uh, 879,000 people playing at its peak 11 months ago. Um, and as of right now, it's like around 11,000 people playing. So the game didn't go on to be like massively successful long-term, but it was at launch. And a lot of that has to do with the calling out of JK Rowling, but then going around and also just, it, it was a lot of stuff happening. I can't even like going into streamers streams and doing stuff and, and things like that. And it just sort of backfired on the movement of Hogwarts Legacy. I don't know the answers. I don't know what's right or wrong. Like, maybe it was a good idea to do all of that. Maybe it wasn't. It really depends on what everybody's personal goal was with calling it out. But I'm, I feel like everyone knows that J.K. Rowling is transphobic at this point. Even the people that say that she's not, think they know it too. They're just saying that she's not. She's a transphobic individual. The stuff that you do, the stuff that she does... You don't do that consistently if you're not. They just don't like the they don't like the tag that comes along with it. That's the reality of it. Um, so I think everybody knows that and continue to call her out on it, continue to do things that make people aware. I get it. But with this show, with the Harry Potter series, I think there needs to be another approach. Again, for me, it's easy for me to go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna boycott it because I'm not I'm probably not gonna watch it anyway, most likely. Um, so it's easy for me. There's a lot of people that love this series that I know for a fact struggle with the idea of boycotting anything to go along with Harry Potter because they they love the books. They they love the old movies. They love that stuff. I get it. I don't and I don't even know how I'm supposed to navigate that space. I typically am just like, okay, if you if you're going to do it, you're going to do it. What what am I going to say? What am I going to do about it? Shame you some more? <laughs> I mean, at this point, I don't know what that's accomplished. Anyway, Collectively, we probably need to come up with a an approach that works a little bit better so that it doesn't generate so much spite. Spite is a very dangerous tool. I can't tell you the amount of people that I saw in the Chud space who decided to play the Hogwarts Legacy game specifically to spite people who didn't want them to play it. And they probably didn't even care about Harry Potter. So that's another thing. It's just like spite is such a powerful tool. Most of that community is built on a, on a mountain of spite. It's not sustainable, but it's certainly in the short term it does what it does. I looked at some of the writers here attached to um, the series, potential writers. Um, we have Martha Hillier, who I checked her social media. Seems like she's mostly just doing stuff or talking about stuff related to the writers, you know, strike and things like that. She hasn't really posted much recently. Um, Kathleen Jordan, her social media, um, she's seemed to be very supportive of queer people in general. Um, I saw some RuPaul pictures that she posted with some quotes. So clearly not aboard that like anti-queer thing that JK Rowling is on board of. Uh, Tom Moran, not very much about him. Michael Leslie was the co-writer for the Hunger Games prequel 
um, that came out that was so woke, um, girl boss stuff or whatever. I'm sorry, the screen is really tiny. I didn't realize it was on that screen. I apologize. So yeah, so one of the writers was part of that Hunger Games, uh, the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, I believe was the title, the one that came out last year. And everybody was kind of saying, oh, it's so woke, it's so woke get what go broke stuff so it's going to be this weird thing because jk rowling who created harry potter is supposedly going to be an executive producer or somehow attached creatively to the series so are the writers going to just overlook all of that for this job if they get the job because again this is all rumored stuff if they get the job they're just going to overlook it and be like we're going to work with her even though we know the kind of stuff that she gets into on social media um i kind of had to have an issue with that to me that's that's even more egregious than like not boycotting something when you actively are getting paid to engage with people that do this kind of stuff. That's, that's more egregious for me because then I need, I need to know a reason why I need to know why, why would you do that? Why would you sell yourself out like that? Um, is money that important uh, when it comes to that stuff? And that's really the question that, it, that, you know, comes to the back of my mind with that. Um, because accountability is a thing. This is why I think boycotts are so weird. If I tell you that I'm not going to shop at Walmart because Walmart has done something that I don't like, we all agree that Walmart has done something shitty, who is holding me accountable for that, right? I mean, it's literally, I could buy from Walmart and you wouldn't even know it unless I'm holding something up that has Walmart on it. Like if I buy a PlayStation from Walmart, how would you know that? You wouldn't know that. So it comes down to personal accountability. So boycotts on the internet are really really difficult. The one thing that we can do is raise awareness about something, but I think actively the this idea that everyone is personally you know engaging in a boycott without any accountability at all. I, I don't know if that works. I don't know what the answer is, but I certainly don't think that that's the the one thing that, that for me that works because it all comes down to personal accountability. So I don't know what we're going to do with this. Is this going to be a Hogwarts legacy situation again, where everybody on the internet is going to go wild and, um, you know, try and shame people and then build up this, this spite so that the show goes on to be a massive success. Look, it's probably going to be a success anyway. That's the thing is I, I, I as much as I wish that JK Rowling would somehow, uh, suffer some sort of consequence or accountability for what she's done. I just don't see a world where that's possible. I just don't see it with after the Hogwarts legacy thing, when it comes to Harry Potter, I feel like you just have to decide personally to disengage from it. I don't think there's for me again, and I'd love to hear comments down below. I don't know a way to navigate this. That makes sense. That will actually achieve the goals of like getting people to stop supporting like a transphobic creator um, without also generating spite to make something successful. I just, it's like the Streisand effect. So I don't have the answer for it. I will say this. I'm probably not going to be watching this because again, I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan, but I'm a unique case for that, right? Because a lot of people love Harry Potter. So for me, it's like, what do I do? I don't know. What are your thoughts on this? You think that J.K. Rowling is going to come in and it's going to be a massively transphobic version of Harry Potter? It's going to be an anti-queer version of Harry Potter? Is that what this is going to be? Or is it just going to be another show trying to recapture the magic of a nostalgic piece of art um, and it's unable to do it? Because we've seen that a lot lately. I'm very curious what you guys think about this. And what are your thoughts on J.K. Rowling in general? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks.